When your calcium harness levels are off, it can damage your pool equipment, erode your surfaces, and turn your water cloudy. Hi, I'm Matt from Swim University, and while calcium harness doesn't seem like a big deal for swimming, it can cause big problems in the long run, especially for certain types of pool surfaces. So here's everything that you need to know about balancing calcium harness and protecting the lifespan of your pool. First, What's calcium harness and why does it even matter? Calcium harness, also known as total calcium harness, measures the amount of dissolved calcium carbonate in pool water. The water that you use to fill your pool naturally contains minerals like calcium. Hard water has a high concentration of minerals, while soft water has very few minerals. And here's why that matters for pool care. If your pool water doesn't have enough calcium, it will try to find it elsewhere. That means that the water gets aggressive and starts pulling calcium right out of your pool's plaster, your concrete, or grout, causing etching and pitting. Low calcium can also damage metal components like salt cells and heaters. On the flip side, if your water has too much calcium, it can start depositing that extra calcium as white, chalky buildup on your pool surfaces and your equipment. This can also cause cloudy water, clog your filters, heaters, salt systems, and plumbing over time. So why does calcium harness get so out of balance? Well, your levels can change for several reasons. Low calcium harness usually happens when you've just added fresh water to your pool, especially if that water is naturally soft. Rainwater also tends to be soft, so heavy rainfall can dilute your calcium harness levels. High calcium harness comes from three things. Number one is your water source. If you're filling your pool with well water or you live in an area with naturally hard water, you'll have higher calcium hardness levels. Two is high pH. This can cause calcium to precipitate out of solution, creating that white scaly buildup or even flakes. So check your pH first and bring it down into the proper range. That can help bring your calcium back into solution. Number three is cal hypo chlorine shock. This can raise your calcium hardness levels since it has calcium in it. Okay, so here's how calcium hardness affects different pool types. Number one is concrete and plaster pools. Having enough calcium hardness in the water is so important important for cement, plaster, pebble, quartz, grout, or stone surfaces. Without it, the water will literally eat away at your pool surfaces to get the calcium that it needs, and it causes pitting and etching. High calcium levels isn't good either, since it causes scaling and cloudy water in any pool type. Number two is fiberglass pools. Now, fiberglass pools can handle lower calcium harness levels, but high levels, especially if the pH is high, can cause surface damage like chalking, discoloration, and even scaling. Number three is vinyl liner pools. Vinyl liner pools are the most forgiving when it comes to calcium harness but you still want to keep your levels in the proper range to prevent scaling. Number four is saltwater systems. The salt cell inside a saltwater generator is prone to calcium buildup. Now combined with the naturally high pH that the salt system produces, high calcium hardness levels can coat your salt cell. Now this weakens and damages your generator over time, so you want to check your salt cell about every three months for calcium buildup and clean it more frequently if your calcium hardness levels run high or consider using a stain and scale preventer. By the way, we break down the right way to take care of each type of pool here in the Pool Care Handbook. So whether you have an above ground pool, an in ground pool, a saltwater pool, there's a maintenance plan inside for you. You can grab your copy at swimu.com book or by using any of the links below. So what are the right calcium hardness levels? Well, the ideal range is between 175 and 225 parts per million for vinyl and fiberglass pools and 200 to 275 parts per million for concrete and plaster pools. Now, while it's okay to have lower calcium hardness in vinyl liner and fiberglass pools, you'll still need some calcium in the water. Some pool equipment, like heaters, need calcium to protect its parts. And if you have plaster around the water line or concrete around the pool, that will etch and pit if the calcium is too low. So you wanna to plan to test your calcium harness at least once a month or after you've added fresh water to your pool. Most seven-way test strips include a total hardness reading. Okay, here's how to raise your calcium harness. Now to do this, you'll need to add calcium harness increaser to your pool. It takes about one to 1.25 pounds of calcium chloride to raise your calcium harness levels by 10 parts per million, and that's for every 10,000 gallons of pool water that you have. It's easier to add more than it is to take it back, so start by adding less calcium than you think you need. And don't adjust your pH or alkalinity a few hours before or after adding calcium hardness, because this can cause the calcium to precipitate out of solution and end up depositing all over your pool surfaces and your equipment. Add calcium hardness increaser directly to your pool, broadcasting it across the water in the deep end if you have one with the pump running, and be sure 
sure to brush it around if you see it collecting at the bottom, because if it sits there, it can actually damage your pool surface. The other option is to pre-dissolve calcium harness increaser in a bucket of pool water, but you have to be careful because calcium carbonate gets hot when it's added to water. Wear gloves and goggles and keep your skin covered when mixing and adding it. Always add calcium to water, not water to dry calcium, and stir it with a wooden dowel or one of those paint sticks. Too much calcium can actually melt plastic, so you wanna do this in five pound batches or less. Then you wanna pour the mixture slowly around the perimeter of the pool, not all in one spot, with the pump running. Now for either method, let the pump run for at least eight hours to fully dissolve and distribute the calcium. Then you can retest the water the next day and add more if you need to. And a quick heads up, if you have a freshly plastered pool, you don't wanna add too much calcium too quickly. It needs time to cure and your calcium levels need to stay low for the first month or two. Finally, here's how to lower your calcium hardness. Unfortunately, there's really only one effective way to do this, and that's by partially draining and refilling your pool with fresh filtered water that has lower hardness levels. Whenever you fill your pool, I recommend that you always use a hose filter. This will help remove some of the minerals like calcium from your water. If you have really hard water, you might need something more powerful like a water softener. After refilling, you can test all your chemical levels again. You'll need to rebalance your pH, your alkalinity, and your chlorine since everything's been diluted. The other option is to use a stain and scale preventer. Now this won't technically lower your calcium, but it will stop the calcium from depositing on your surfaces. And finally, if you need more help with water chemistry, check out our other water chemistry videos or the pool care handbook at swimu.com book or by using any of the links below. That's it, thanks again, and happy swimming.